From sunny Southern California, this is the Executive Housekeeper 101 from housekeepingrehab.com. Here now is your Executive Housekeeper, Abel Josephson. Mm. Hola, thank you for coming back. Here we go, the Executive Housekeeper 101, information, teaching, and uh, learning for you, the first time executive housekeeper, hotel security, housekeeping security, security in the housekeeping department. But the one thing that I'm going to focus on is uh, something you would never guess would be so important about security. Front desk couldn't be bothered. Engineering doesn't even care. Oh, and what about your friends in food and beverage? They don't care about housekeeping security issues. They're not worried about this one particular security issue in our housekeeping department, but we are. The most common problem, the one I'm most asked about, theft of tips. You know, when a guest leaves the room and they're so thankful for this one or that one who helped them clean the room, maybe straightened their shoes, did extra things, so nice in the hall, hola. You, you notice a lot of people just, they just dump out all their change. Eh, it's a couple of dollars there, but they don't feel guilty because they left something. And that's a tip that works. But we have to secure those tips. And that's kind of the one thing I'm going to focus on because every, most everybody, I mean, regularly, once a month, what do you do about, you know, tips being stolen? So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about everything. First, let me say that the most important uh, thing about security is that you exude a sense of confidence in your people. I've come to a new department, just like you're in a new department. And the old executive housekeeper will be taking me around in my little orientation. Here's our supply closet and our linen. And here's where the trash dumpster is and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I will ask them, why, why do you lock this closet? Like, housemen are in and out of this thing all the time. Supervisors, everybody. How, why, why do you lock it? And I know uh, what I'm up against in a department in terms of the spirit of security, the confidence of trust, when they say this to me, oh, if you don't like that, they'll steal. The people will steal. They'll steal the sheets. They'll steal the chemicals, all this stuff. Only once in my going on 18 something years in uh, corporate hotels, only once have I had a known theft and the person was identified and confronted and the product or the item that was stolen showed back up the next day. It was a pair of $30,000 diamond earrings. And this person really took the earrings. And we had them. We had them on uh, the key lock security. We knew when they went in, what key they used. We know what time they went in. We had a part of their travels to the hotel to get to this room on video camera. So we confronted them and, and the, the message was this. First of all, we want the earrings back. After that, if we get the earrings back, then we'll talk about your job. But first, we want those back. And the next day in my office showed up when I came in, unlocked the door, boom, hey, somebody the previous night had put a pair of $30,000 diamond earrings on my desk. And that person never showed up for subsequent conversations. But that's happened once and that's big. That's what everybody thinks. Oh, they steal. It does happen, I know. You have to have as an executive housekeeper a vibe about you, baby. A vibe that says, I trust you. I trust you. I've seen executive housekeepers, they, uh, always uh, have the houseman and the people come to them to go unlock a supply cabinet or supply closet. I don't have time for that. I'm busy. I'm not going back and forth all day. The biggest picture is it sends a message. I don't trust any of you. You come to me because I'm going to be there to make sure what? To make sure you don't steal. This is bad mojo. This is very bad mojo. I have a vibe about you that's cool. Trust until you have a reason not to. But it won't be the whole department you don't trust. It'll be just the individual that has an issue. If you have an issue, you better have them caught red-handed with backup and evidence and documentation and video camera and key lock security. Do not ever, 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 ever in your career accuse something uh, of somebody and be wrong. And then when you find out you're wrong, you can't do anything to them. But now they know in the back of their minds, you accuse me of stealing, how dare you? The nerve of you to do that. And then they talk, right, in, in the break room. Everybody else in the department knows you accused them and you were wrong. You talk about damage, your integrity, your respect, all the things that you need that we need to lead and to, and to guide. You ruin it quick with Everybody never accuse unless you have evidence and you caught them and it's undeniable. There's nothing that they can say. If you don't catch them, but you think they did, boop, 
keep your mouth shut. Just address it with the group in the monthly meeting. We had some things go missing, and so we want to pay attention and follow these protocols and these these things so that we don't have, you know, this kind of thing going on. And I think we all understand how important that is. Never accuse anybody. Never act like the department is just a bunch of burglars and a den of thieves. And that is regular in the hotel industry. Not even in housekeeping, but outside of the department. If somebody calls and, and says, I'm missing a hair dryer from my room. It was gone when I got back to my room. Front desk will come to me and say, yeah, the house, somebody in housekeeping took this guy's hair dryer. No, 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 no. Never accuse my department. You stand up for your department when other departments accuse you or infer that you have thieves and burglars. You do not. Here we go. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is your office. That's the first thing you're going to look at when you come into your new job as an executive housekeeper. This is the executive housekeeper 101. The first thing you're going to do is make sure you have nice, fresh, reprogrammed keys or a nice, fresh set of hard keys for your door. You're going to secure your office. That's your first issue. You have no idea how many keys have left the building that will get into that door of your office. You have no idea who in the department has keys. You make sure you have a fresh set of keys and security on your door. Second of all, and hang on, we're going to get to how do you prevent tips from being stolen in a room? Because that happens, really. That does happen. Not too often, but you gotta keep an eye on it. Computer security, make sure you got a nice fresh password on there. Nobody can get into that system. One time, I came into my department. I'd been there about a month, and the supervisors were not on my team and the housekeeping department was not on my team, and they had run this golf resort hotel for years, and they were not going to run my department. I was hired to run it, and that's just, well, that's just how we do. I know, I've seen me do it. And I came in and a supervisor, Lord, a supervisor was sitting at my desk going through my computer. And when I said, what are you doing? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, we usually get to use this computer to look up things or whatever. I sit down, you know what they had up? All my human resources notes that I've been taking on my documentation. I constantly document conversations. They'd gone in, found the file, and were looking at the things I'd written about, you know, what I had said to people and, and suggestions and corrections that I'd given. I document all that stuff. I have to. It's a bit tedious, but you have to do it. Get a password on that computer. Nobody sits at your computer. You know, another thing while I'm thinking about it, at the end of the day, in the big corporate hotels, you'll have the uh, loss prevention manager or the security supervisor stand at the exit door when everybody's leaving and they look into bags, right? That's okay. Let them do that. That's their job, their role. I never do that. I find another place at an exit where they come or go by so I can thank them for coming that day. Thank you for helping us today. Thank your people every day. When you see them headed out, okay, oh, well, uh, you know, hasta la bye bye. Hey, thank you for your help today. We needed help. I appreciate you. Thank you very much for helping us. I don't look into bags to make sure, you know, why? Because I don't have the idea that I run a den of thieves and a and a house full of burglars. All right, just jumping around different things. If you let somebody take something from your department, write out a slip. My name is Abel Josephson. I give uh, this or that person permission to remove an old unwanted lamp from the storage room. They uh, have full permission to take personal possession of it. Make sure you have notes to leave with people. Prevent the appearance of any wrongdoing. Prevent the appearance of it. Make sure they have full confidence. They don't worry about anything. All right, let me talk about theft security of tips. Cash tips that are left in the room that because different people go in there, sometimes you have a situation where somebody is a little tempted and they take that five, 10, 15, 20 dollars and they put it in their pocket and they go on and it doesn't belong to them. That belongs to the room attendant that cleaned that room the last time that departure guest was in there. Well, the houseman says, yeah, but I stripped the room. I don't care. That's not how we run it. We have to know who those tips go to. I'm going to show you how to prevent tip theft, but it requires some preparation. First of all, you have to put in writing all of these guidelines on who gets tips, when they get them, right? And every single employee, I don't care if you work in the laundry and never go to a room, you're a Whatever, everybody signs off on this. So you have a clear documentation and training on the program. Never ambush. Never just come in day and get somebody in trouble because you think they took a tip when they have no guidelines as to whether they can, they have to be told, you cannot take tips. That's fair, right? 
never ambush. I'm going to give you a little, little inside secret as how to catch people. But you have to tell everybody in the department the inside secret, and this is the secret. Works every time. Usually, once I announce that I am going to do something in a certain way to prevent tip theft, I never have a problem ever again with the stealing of the tips. And away we go now, here's how you do it. First of all, you let your general manager know you are doing this that I'm going to tell you. You are going to plant things in the rooms that uh, possibly could be taken by the wrong person. You're going to go and put something in the room and then see if somebody comes in and takes it. But listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen, 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 listen. You do not ambush your employees. First of all, you train them and you put the training in writing. Who can take tips? And then you tell them, here's how I check to make sure tips belong where they belong and do not walk where they should not go. I will put money into rooms. I'll put cash money into rooms. You tell your people this. I will bring a witness that will witness it. Who do I bring? What witness? A supervisor, if there's that trust, and, and I should do a, a message on s managing supervisors. That's a tri tricky political thing when you're a, a brand new executive housekeeper and you have brand new supervisors, they've been loyal to a manager for a few years and you're the new guy. They don't even know if you like them. They're nervous and insecure. You haven't established that trust relationship, but that's another time. Usually I take the general manager. Hey, run up with me. I got a couple of rooms. I want to put uh, tips in and, and just check things. My general manager goes with me. We go get some coffee and I go in the morning, seven o'clock, 730 or whatever. Uh, when everybody's gone, because I go and I check all my vacant, dirty rooms first. Go watch that video, you know, how to open and close the house. You'll get more information on that. And I simply put a $10 bill down, you know. You don't have to do this every day. You just need to do it once. They need to know that you do it as a deterrent. I have a witness. Now, keep in mind, you explain to your people that you do this and how you do it. You don't ambush your totally transparent. It lets them know nobody's taking your tips. I'm going to make sure. So anybody that knows that I do this is going to be very careful about coming in and taking a tip. They don't know if I put it there with a witness or not. That's your deterrent. You do it once, twice, three times a year just to do it because it's good practice. You do it when you get new employees, right? And you tell them that you do it. Now you do it randomly. They never know. I go and I put the tip in and then I watch the room and then I go back to the housekeeper who I know should rightfully receive the tip and I say, was there a tip in your room this morning? I asked the, the housekeeper. Yeah, there was a, a $5 tip. All right, you can keep that. I put that in there because I do this to make sure we have tip security and that people know that we have a way of, of watching it. Oh, but no, you can have the money back. No. That's a petty cash issue. I took care of that with the front desk and the GM. Nobody lost five bucks. We're happy to have tip security. You keep that because you're honest and we appreciate you. We need help and you help us a lot. Same thing with lost and found. Same program. I tell them, make sure that we're doing what we need to do with uh, lost and found items. I will leave items in vacant rooms when I check rooms in the morning. Just make sure you bring it down. Everything's cool. I go to the lost and found uh, storage where we have it all locked up and cataloged. I get a hair dryer or I get a, a tie or some gloves or whatever I can find, cell charger, and I just place it in a room with a witness. And then I track that to make sure that shows up back on my desk. Now remember, housekeepers go to all their vacants first. Why? They can go door to door and they just go check. What are they checking for? Tips. That's why this is important. That's part of how they get paid. Be seen, be known, be trusted that you look after that and you secure that benefit for your people. You should have a vibe. Everything we're doing is so you can make more money. If you go to a person, you say, uh, there was no, uh, was there a tip in your room this morning when you came in, uh, Carmen? No, there was no tip. Oh, really? Because when I came in this morning to check this vacant room, there was a $5 bill, $10 bill laying there. You didn't get it? All right. And I go get security immediately and I come back and I interrogate that lock. And I'm going to find out if a houseman went in there. I'll be honest with you, it's one of two people. 
Houseman or maintenance? Doesn't matter, you'll catch maintenance. Doesn't matter if they know you do this or not, that's not your department. You go get that maintenance manager and you say, look, we put a tip in there because this is our program, you explain it to them and it's gone and we interrogated the lock and your guy, he went into the room and I got a tip missing and I can find out when I went in and put in the tip by the catalog on the readout on the lock interrogation. I can find out when somebody who may have taken the tip came in, I can find out when that housekeeper that was supposed to get the tip came in. Well, we got a problem right here in the middle. It was there, It somebody came in, and then it was gone when the person who rightfully had that tip entered the room. You know, once a month, I'll remind them. Don't forget, I put tips in vacant rooms when I check rooms in the morning. And so, you know, let's make sure that if that tip belongs to us, let's take that tip. And uh, if that tip doesn't belong to us, let's not take it. That is the most common security issue that I face as an executive housekeeper. Simple thing like that. But why should it be a big thing? Why shouldn't it have severe consequences like termination if you take that tip? Because it's theft. It's theft of value, theft of cash. And it belongs to that housekeeper. And they need to know that you are the knight in the shining armor, protecting their tips. It's very important because when they trust you like that and rely on you for that, it invites them to rely on you for other things. It builds trust that affects every other operation of your business. Trust is so important as the executive housekeeper. Okay, now we all know about that. Now, so let's look at key security every morning. When the, when the room attendants come, their keys for their section are on their board. If they spill into two sections, they get two sets of keys. They must sign out for those keys when they pick up their board. I put the keys on there because I open the house every day. I want to know where everybody's going and, and what our goal is and our work is for the day. So I give them the keys, they sign out for them. At the end of the day, they sign them back in. Those keys uh, give you access to what? the assets of the hotel. And you keep those documents, those sign in and sign outs, all your documents, laundry, supply inventory, uh, housekeeping, may, uh, room attendant assignment sheets that you get off the boards every day, stapled up every document that was written on or printed that day in your department is put together, put in an envelope, dated and kept for one year. You keep them one year, that's it. If something's gonna go wrong, we're gonna find out probably in a week. Because sometimes a month later, a guest goes, oh my God, I left this. If they left something uh, and it ends up in lost and found and after 30 days, we discard it, I get them on the phone and I say, yes, you did leave it. You did not contact us with that. And yes, after 30 days, it is discarded. Well, I wanna talk to the, the, the uh, housekeeper that found that in my room, I think they stole it. Nobody talks to your people but you. Nobody. Front desk associates don't go ask questions about missing, lost, and found or items. Front desk manager does not interrogate your people. The only people that can have a conversation with your people is you first, then HR, then security, then general manager. Nothing goes beyond you without it coming to you first. A couple of more things about key security. You cannot oversee everything that needs to be overseen. A lot of times once I break the house out, I've got to go to a morning stand up with the executive operating committee and hopefully the coffee's good and I got treats like Danish. I like Danish. Or taquitos or breakfast tacos from the restaurant. Oh my God. <laughs> By having the morning stand up with the room attendants and the houseman, everybody there. And then they've got their keys and everything. Supervisor has to go and double check what keys were taken, who's got what section, and they're responsible for making sure the proper keys went out and that we're not missing something th that we shouldn't be missing. They follow up on that at the end of the day. They follow up on the keys returning. Here's something that you may or may not think about that is key security. Your section, you're in section number two down there. That's your end of the hall. But today, because of occupancy, uh, we had to adjust you down a little bit. Uh, a lot of your rooms are vacant, so you're you're cleaning some rooms in this section and three or four rooms in this section here. So you have two different sections of keys. Of course, you're going to have to sign out two different sets of keys. We get that. But just because you have keys to other rooms in your section that you will not be cleaning that day 
you are not authorized to enter into any of those rooms. You have no permission, no authorization to enter into any room except as what is on your board. You only are authorized to go in what's on your board. It's about lunch. Before I go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in and check these two or three occupied rooms. I'm in occupied rooms all the time. It's where my money's made. And I'm going to check the service in these rooms. And I go in there and there's a, there's a person, a room attendant working, but her friend from across the hall is in there. No, no. What are you doing in this room? Let me see your board. You don't have this room on your board. Oh, but I was uh, letting you know my friend here know that uh, I'm gonna take lunch, go have lunch with me. I don't care, I do not care. You are in no ways under any circumstances allowed to step one foot into that room without checking with your supervisor or without checking with me. There's a variety of reasons for this. Remember, this is key security. Maybe you got a problem with that lady and you're in there fussing with her, causing her a problem while she's trying to be productive and do her work. Happens, get out of the room. You have no business, you're not authorized. Is it on your board? It's part of security. Nobody in a room unless they are authorized and that's what's on their board and that's it. Not even to visit, not even to help. You get it, it's easy, but be on it. Pistols and knives, weaponry, spears, anything that looks like a bomb. Uh, we train everybody on this first. We explain what is allowed in the rooms and we have them sign off. If a room attendant goes into a room and there's a gun laying on the, on the desk, the second you notice a firearm in a guest room, stop, get your things and get out, go to a supervisor. I entered in room 415, there's a pistol and a grenade laying on the on the dresser, on the chest of drawers, on the coffee table next to the Danish. If you don't have security, I just take care of it. I go to the front desk and I say, make me a new key for this room, I'm going to do a lockout. Those key locks will not recognize the key that the guest has if I make a new one and put it into the lock. It reprograms the lock, so when the get, not a master key, a guest room key made by the front desk. So when the guest comes back two hours later, they put their key in there. Oh, my, my key's not working. It forces them to come to the front desk. The front desk has been notified. Mr. Johnson, we understand that uh, a firearm was found in your guest room. So one of two things happens. You don't get service, A, or B, we provide service. That thing must be removed from the room or put in your safe in the room or put at the safe, big safe at the front desk and identify safety, security. Dear Lord, you don't want that thing falling on the ground and going off and shooting somebody, hurting them, harming them. And you be very strict about this. And if you find somebody's gone in and cleaned it and there's a big knife laying on the table or something like that, you document a conversation. You have no patience for anybody violating this rule. Why? It's a trust relationship. You see, your team, your pack, so to speak, sees that you pay attention, that nothing can harm them. That's part of the vibe, the confidence we have that our executive housekeeper looks after us. And these things have an optic to them to help everybody understand that this guy has our back. This woman has our back. And the absolute enforcement of security issues, very important because of the bigger, broader message that it sends to the humans and the hearts that work with you in your department as the executive housekeeper. The last thing I do is after I lock out the guest, I put a note under the door. Our room attendants discover there are firearms openly displayed in the room. We, we will not be able to provide service. Please visit with your front office manager, right? Or security desk, or whatever you've got to rectify this situation. They will notify me and we'll be glad to continue your five-star service today. Get it fixed. Cats and dogs are cute, but cats and dogs are not allowed to be alone in a room. A, they can tear stuff up. B, the little dogs, they get nervous, they're insecure, they're in the wrong environment, and they start barking. If you go into a room and you see a pet, oh, close the door immediately. Dear Lord, the last thing we want is for a cat or dog to get out, and, and then it's our responsibility to chase it. And people say, well, it's no problem, he won't bite. Uh, he barks a little, but he won't hurt anybody. And don't worry, he won't go. No, we don't take that risk. If you're a pet friendly property in a pet carrier, that's it. Don't service a room with a cat or dog until it's taken care of just like guns and knives, you get it. All right, here's one more item of security. 
that, that nobody except executive housekeepers and housekeeping people are aware of. Do not disturb sign is a security issue. Do not disturb means we can't go into that room. What's in that room? Everything that our company owns. We own everything in there except the people and their underwear and their shoes and their toothbrush. We don't own those things, you know that. Those are our assets. And you've been in here for nine days and, and you've not allowed us to come in? Oh, you need to be in that room every three days maximum. Maximum. I'm every three days. My supervisors know, the room attendants know, Mr. Abel needs to be told if this is the second or third day of a do not disturb sign. But you're the last defense. That's part of room security. Don't be afraid to stand up for your property and take care of your assets. Last thing your general manager wants to find out, this guy went four weeks with no service and nobody paid attention and they tore that shit up. Not a good look for you. But again, I'm gonna close with this. Have an umbrella, a big picture of trust relationship with supervisors and employees and general manager and security. They need to trust that you executive housekeeper, you are serious about it. You're particular. You're on it. You might be a little anal, but they need to know that you care and have a program and you keep an eye on the company's assets. That's part of the art of moving up. These people pay attention to the business of the hotel and security is part of the business. It's part of the product that you provide your guests. Be secure. Let's go be, let's go, you know, be secure. secure. The hotel and hospitality industry is a type of entertainment and a form of show business. Thanks for visiting the Executive Housekeeper 101 with Abel Josephson from housekeepingrehab.com. <laughs>